Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Personal alchemy, transforming and transmuting. Transforming what? Well, today we're going to talk about exploring the possibilities of transmuting negative thoughts and negative emotions into positive energy. We're going to talk about how to use certain techniques, powerful techniques, to reframe negative beliefs and cultivate a positive mindset, ultimately harness the transformative power of positivity. By mastering this alchemy process, we can unlock our true potential and we can boost our resilience and we can attract abundance into our lives, ultimately meeting our our goals, our, our, our life goals. Uh, some of the benefits of this is enhance mental well-being overall. You know, if you transform negative thoughts, you can reduce your stress, your anxiety, your depression. You can promote better mental health overall, better overall well-being. That's what we all want. Second thing is increased self-empowerment. Feel more confident about yourself. The solution comes from within you. If you can turn your negative experiences into positive opportunities, it empowers you to take charge of your life. You don't look at anything as a woe is me or a downside. There's ebbs and flows, but you take it all in stride and you have a proactive um, look and, and you, you can make proactive choices you know, to benefit your life. And then the third thing, the benefit for today is improved relationships. So positive energy radiates. It fosters harmonious interactions with other people and it attracts positive connections uh, with others as well. So that's what we're talking about today. Welcome into uh, the podcast. Uh, Really excited about this. Um, You know, we've been talking about alchemy, personal alchemy for the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks. And so I just thought, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we can find out. Let's see what else we can learn. Let's see what else we can implement into our lives to help to increase the level of productivity and our uh, satisfaction overall uh, with our well-being. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. If this is your first time, welcome aboard. This is uh, season three, episode 19. You've got 18 other episodes to listen to before you go back to the other two seasons. Please go ahead and subscribe so you don't forget who we are and where we are. We're on all major podcasts and platforms. Uh, easy to find. Rethink. Rethink podcast. Old timers, guys, thanks for coming back week after week and continuing to uh, support the podcast. Uh, make sure you're still sharing your favorite podcast once a week with a family member, loved one, friend, or associate. Doesn't matter which one, just take one, uh, copy the link, send it out to your brother, your coworker, your boss, whoever. Hey, this is a podcast that I found. I thought you may find it interesting. That helps us out greatly. And then lastly, uh, please consider donating to the podcast. Uh, your donations go a long way with us. It helps us to do more, better, and greater here at Rethink Podcast. All right, five practical methods. We're going to jump right into it. Five practical methods uh, that you can employ as it relates to transforming power, transformative power of turning negative thoughts into positive power and achieving your goals. Now, before we get started, the first thing I'll say is relatively intuitive and probably uh, a no-duh type of statement, but it needs to be said because without this, uh, all of this could be for naught. The first thing is you need to believe or you have to believe that this is possible. Otherwise, it's like going to a therapist, psychiatrist, and you are convinced that you're not going to get help. 
that in and of itself will ensure that you uh, do not uh, receive the help that you need. So here, my frame of mind is always this. I'm not trying to convince you of anything, okay? I'm providing information you can take and do what you will. I'm not trying to convert anyone into anything, okay? I'm providing you with information. The hope is that you'll take it and you'll uh, test it. And if it works, you'll use it for your life and then it'll, it'll improve your life. I mean, just as simple as that. So we always use a 30 day process here. If this is something that, you know, you, is a little uncomfortable, something you never thought about, and it really is testing the boundaries of your comfortability in terms of, you know, what your uh, thought method is, then what's the harm for 30 days? If you do something like this for 30 days, uh, it doesn't work. Go back to what you were doing, but at least give it some time to see if it works. Uh, The whole point of rethink is to challenge what you're thinking. So none of it should be completely comfortable, okay? Because it should challenge what you currently think. And if where you are in your life is not where you really want to be, then the logical path uh, or the logical mind would say, well, my thoughts and my decisions got me here. Perhaps if I think different thoughts and do different things, uh, then I can be possibly closer to my goals of where I want to be. So for 30 days, uh, I'm just, you know, throwing it out there. Try this for 30 days. If it works, great. If it doesn't, go back to what you were doing. So here we go. Transformative power, transmuting and transforming. This is personal alchemy. We're talking about five practical methods to employ. Uh, the first thing we've talked about before is mindful awareness. So you can start by cultivating mindful awareness of your thoughts and emotions. In other words, just get in touch with who you are and what you think on a regular basis. Most of us already know this because thoughts and emotions are repetitive. Why are they repetitive? Because your body feeds them by creating chemicals every day based on what you do. It is a cyclical process. It's a cyclical process. You program yourself. Your body kicks out these chemicals. Chemicals make you feel a certain way. There come your emotions and your thoughts are tied to all that. And most of the time, if you sit and if you think about it uh, throughout the day, you may have certain feelings during certain times of the day and they're repetitive. Maybe it gets close to four or five o'clock and you're about to get off work. Maybe you start feeling great about that. Or maybe you start feeling anxiety on Monday mornings. All that stuff is chemical based. So anyway, when you catch yourself dwelling on negative thoughts or emotions, pause for a second, observe them without judgment. Mindful awareness. Mindful awareness helps you to gain insight into your thought patterns and your emotional responses. Thoughts are tied to emotion. Emotions are tied to thoughts. Um, You can think of something really uncomfortable right now. It doesn't have to be true doesn't have to be true. Think of something really uncomfortable right now. Let's say your loved one, someone, you, you know, your husband, your wife, your spouse, uh, your partner um, is, um, I don't know, having a difficult time at work. I don't want to say anything uh, too trepidatious, but they're having a difficult time at work and they're uncomfortable and, and they're upset when they come home. If you think about that and you can kind of feel their pain because you're close to them, kind of upsets you a little bit too, right? Because he or she is part of you. And so even thinking about that maybe upsets you a little bit. So just consider how your thoughts and your emotions are sort of tied together. So that's mindfulness awareness. Number two is thought reframing. Thought reframing, keep this in mind because we're going to really dig into this one today. Thought reframing. Once you're aware of negative thoughts through the mindful awareness, once you're aware of them, practice thought reframing. You can challenge negative beliefs and you can replace them with positive and empowering affirmations. This is the personal alchemy. This is the transforming and transmuting that we're talking about. Here's an example. Catch yourself thinking this. I'll never be able to do this or that. Okay, whatever it is. I'll never be able to do it. Reframe it as I'm capable of overcoming challenges and I can learn to grow from this experience. Reframe it. Thought reframe it. We're going we're gonna to really dig in deep to that today. Number three is gratitude process. You want to cultivate a daily gratitude process and practice to shift your focus from negativity to positivity. So every time something negative comes up, think of something positive, positive in your life that you can replace that thought with. Just take a few minutes each day, reflect on things that you're grateful for. Gratitude does help to rewire your brain 
to focus on positive aspects of your life. We spend so much time with this glass half half empty thing. Whenever I hear somebody say that, whenever I hear someone say that, there's a couple of things I hear. Okay, and and you tell me if if w- w- you know where you are. A couple of things I hear. Uh, let me say this the right way because I don't want to offend anyone. A couple of things I hear, it, it becomes apparent to me. I'll just say it as simply as this: when I hear people say certain things, it becomes apparent to me where they are in their in their level of consciousness. And here are two things: number one, um, playing devil's advocate as if the devil needs an advocate. Number two, um, the glass half empty. So if you have a chance to look at anything, an opportunity, relationship, business opportunity, buying a new car, buying a new house, or new new set of pants, I don't know, whatever you're trying to make a decision on, why would you look at the bad part of it? Why would you look at something that could happen negatively? when you have the opportunity to always look at something positive. We're programmed in in many ways to look at and to anticipate what's the worst that can happen. You you want to plan for that. Well, you don't want to plan for what's the worst that can happen because you don't really want that to happen. And if you plan for it, you as a creator are creating space for it. You've sent out to the universe, here, I'm prepared to deal with this. And the universe says, okay. Or you could say, let me look at the glass half full. What I have adopted and say, what is the best thing that can happen out of this situation? What is the best thing that can happen today? When someone calls you and usually, you know, in the past they've been irritating, what is the the best thing that can happen out of this phone call? I know, doesn't sound realistic, uh, but you've got to change the way that you think. That's the whole point of this. It's it, it bumping up against your old paradigm when I say that, because Kelly, that's not really realistic. You know, someone calls me, gets on my nerves. I don't want I don't really think of them that way. Well, it's because you program yourself to think of them as a as a nuisance. You, you program yourself to think of certain things as you don't like. Maybe there are certain foods that you just determined you're just not going to try. OK. But you could change your mind. You could rethink the way that you feel about that particular food. Be open to it. And maybe you would like it. Who knows? So anyway, gratitude practice every day. Practice gratitude. You can replace a negative thought with a positive one because we all have something we can be grateful for. Next is visualization. You can utilize this power of visualization. And you can create a positive mindset. Visualize yourself successful, achieving, doing, being, whatever it is that you really want to be. Live your goals from an imaginative standpoint and create that feeling of living in the end. Experience those uh, positive outcomes and hear your uh, classmates or your parents or your spouse or whoever congratulating you. Hey, you look so good. You've lost the weight. Congratulations on your new home or congratulations on your new marriage. And man, that, your, your son looks just like you or whatever the accolade is that, that you're searching for. Create it, visualize it every day and, and have those feelings uh, for of your desired outcome and you will attract to you that thing that you're trying to achieve. And then lastly, positive self-talk. This kind of goes together. You want to practice positive self-talk because you're talking to yourself all the time, every day, all day. Encourage and motivate yourself with uplifting affirmations. Go back closer to the beginning of this uh, season where we really talked about the power of affirmations and create for yourself a list of affirmations. You need to have a journal. You need to have these things written down where you can go through them. And just use them when you're having those days where, you know, there's some negative talk going on in your head, but you need to replace them with positive affirmations. In other words, what is it that I believe about myself? You've got to be your own cheerleader. You've got to remind yourself of your strengths and most importantly, your past successes. Your past successes are very important because those can be the building blocks to where you want to go to achieving your ultimate goal. Okay, so. By constantly applying these five methods, 
You can gradually transform negative thoughts and emotions into positive power. Remember, the topic today is personal alchemy. We're transforming and transmuting thoughts into positive power. So we can take negative thoughts and we're going to transform them into positive power. Okay, so I wanted to give you these five methods that you can use in order to do that. But the one I want to talk about more than the other, I mean, we'll, maybe we'll come back and talk about the other ones as well. But today I want to talk about thought reframing. Okay, because maybe this is something you, you're not really aware of and you've never heard before. So I'm going to really dig into this one. So this should be really, really good. Thought reframing is also known as cognitive reframing. Okay. It's a psychological technique and it's used to identify and challenge negative thought patterns and replace them with more positive and constructive ones. Okay. This is a method that's used by cognitive therapists. It's a form of psychotherapy. It was developed in the 1960s by a uh, psychiatrist named Aaron Beck, B E C K. OK, so Dr. Beck, often referred to as the father of cognitive therapy, he noticed that his patients with depression tended to have distorted and negative thought patterns. Stay with me. Distorted and negative. You notice how uh, you sometimes overthink things. I know that I do. You sometimes have a more inflated idea of something that you've done wrong versus when you do something right. I know I do. Sometimes you have systematic and continual negative thought patterns about the same particular thing in your life. I know I do because it's, you know, you may have 10 things in your life, nine of them are going great. And it's one that's not. And you, you focus on that one. Let's keep moving. So he observed that their negative thoughts contributed to their emotional distress and it influenced their behaviors and perceptions of reality. Your thoughts can and will alter and influence your perceptions of reality, because what is reality? It's your perception. So Beck's work led him to develop the theory that our thoughts, our cognitions, play a crucial role in shaping our emotions and ultimately our behaviors. Now, he proposed that people, uh, people's emotional responses are uh, not solely determined by external events, but rather the way that they interpret and make meaning of those events through their thoughts. Okay, let me say that again. He proposed that people's emotional responses, okay, are not solely determined by the event, whatever happens, the eternal event, you know, car crash, uh, uh, job loss, or bad news, just bad news, right? but rather the way they interpret it and make meaning of these events through their thoughts. And when I was reading this, I thought of something. I, you guys know I'm a big Disney head. So uh, <laughs> I love the Pirates of the Caribbean is some of my favorite Disney movies and also my absolute favorite Disney attraction. And so Jack Sparrow, if you don't know the story, Jack Sparrow is you know, the main character in Pirates of the Caribbean. And one of the things that Jack, is known for saying is um, the problem isn't the problem. The problem is the way that you're thinking about the problem. Okay. The problem isn't the problem. The problem is the way that you are thinking about the problem. So this is what Beck is talking about. How does an event individual interpret these events? This is really what um, Shakespeare was talking about when he said, you know, um, um, a thing is neither good or evil or good or bad. It's thinking that makes it so. So how do you interpret what happens to you is the most important thing, the most important behavior as it relates to the effect that it actually will have on you. OK, so a job loss, for example. It could take someone down or it could take someone up. It could it could depress one person and motivate the other. You've read, you've heard, and you may have known people who have had uh, medical diagnoses that were not great. And it took some people down and out and it took other people into a realm of a life that had it not been for that, they wouldn't have lived um, to the extent that they did in terms of the magnitude. OK, they went up. So how are you thinking about your external events? So anyway, based on this theory, Beck and his colleagues devise 
what we're calling cognitive theory, uh, 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 therapy, or the reframing uh, therapy here, which aims to help individuals identify and challenge their negative thought patterns. Let me start right there for one second. Because this begs to be said and asked, have you ever challenged your thoughts? Not challenge your thought like, should I get the red one or the green one? Challenge your thought from the standpoint, if a thought comes to you and is negative, doesn't feel good. Do you ever say, where did you come from? Like, I am not promoting this, okay? my. I want all positive thoughts. And all of a sudden, a negative thought comes into your mind. Do you ever say, uh, hold on, how did you get in here? It sounds a little silly, but I, I mean, honestly, have you ever done that? And if you haven't, why not? Your realm, your brain, your mind, your brain is an organ, but your mind, that realm belongs to you. And you say, this is not something that I desire. And where did you come from? I didn't approve this, this thought. Do you ever challenge negative thought patterns? Okay, just keep that in mind. We're going to talk a little bit more about how you can challenge a negative thought pattern, how you can get rid of it immediately. So replace the negative thoughts with a more balanced and more positive thoughts. So the goal here is to bring about cognitive restructuring, okay? Cognitive restructuring where individuals develop more adaptive and realistic ways of thinking, okay? So over time, cognitive therapy evolved into what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. We'll say CBT, but cognitive behavioral therapy, it combines cognitive restructuring with behavioral techniques cognitive restructuring with behavioral techniques to address a range of mental health issues. And this includes uh, anxiety, depression, uh, any other disorder that could fall in this category. So thought reframing uh, with the context of cognitive behavioral therapy involves these next steps. Number one, It's called Identifying Automatic Negative Thoughts, or A-N-T-S, ANTS. Identifying ANTS, Automated Negative Thoughts. These are individuals, uh, in, in this case, individuals learn to recognize automatic negative thoughts, which are habitual, and they often occur automatically in response to a particular trigger or a situation, okay? I'm going to create a scenario for you. You receive an email from your boss criticizing a recent project that you completed. Okay? You got an email. Your boss criticized. You heard that. Here's an example of an automatic negative thought. You immediately think, I'm terrible at my job and my boss must be disappointed with my work. The examining evidence. Example, you uh, objectively review your performance on the project, recognizing that there were some areas for improvement. But overall, you completed it on time and you met most of the requirements. How can you challenge this negative thought? Here's an example. You question whether the thought I'm terrible at my job is accurate. Question it. You remind yourself of previous successful projects that you've done and positive feedback that you've received from uh, folks in the past. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip. Feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. 
You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. And you can replace, uh, 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 part of this is replacing positive and realistic thoughts, you know, replacing the negative with positive and realistic thoughts. And here's an example of how to do it in this situation. Instead of dwelling on the negative thought, you reframe it with the positive and realistic one. And here's, here it is. While there are always areas for improvement, I am competent in my role and I can learn from this feedback to excel in future projects. Okay. So back to the top, cognitive behavioral therapy, several steps. The first was the ants, identifying automatic thoughts. I gave you an example of getting a negative email from your boss, how you can work through that. It was an automatic thought you, because we tend to think that people who are in uh, superior roles to us in our work life are, I don't know, more right than us or right all the time, their opinion is correct, challenge it. If you don't feel that way about yourself, don't receive uh, this negative thought. All right. So number two, examining evidence. So once those automatic thoughts are identified, individuals are encouraged to examine the evidence. What is the evidence that supports this thought? They're asked to critically evaluate whether these thoughts are based in fact or are they distorted? Okay, are they distorted? The next part of the process is challenging the negative thoughts. Individuals challenge their negative thoughts by questioning the accuracy and the validity. Uh, They look for alternatives, more balanced interpretations of the situation, and see if there's a second opinion. And then lastly, they replace the negative thought with a positive uh, thought. So after you challenge the negative thought, the individual replaces them with a positive, more constructive, and realistic thought that can better reflect the actual circumstance. The actual circumstance. So again, um, cognitive therapy evolved into what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. And it is com- a combination of cognitive restructuring with behavioral techniques um, that, that can help you process through depression, anxiety, and, and things that will trigger you. So you take these four steps. What's the first step? It's the automatic thought. What's the second step? Examine it. What's the third? Challenge it. What's the fourth? Replace with positive and realistic thoughts. Identify, examine, challenge, replace. Okay? All right. I want to get in deeper to that because I just think we accept what people tell us. It's so much of that. With social media and um, so many ways to communicate to you now, And there's so many people that can give you their unwarranted opinion about you. It's important that you have the ability to protect your mental space and that you challenge the thoughts that are coming into that space, whether it is negative self-talk coming from you or if it is critical negative talk coming from external stimuli, external events or external uh, or, 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 or people. Okay. Other people. It's important that you're able to challenge that and you know definitively and and confidently that you are who you are. And whether people have opinions about you or whatever the case may be, you have a process now 
to determine if that thought belongs or if it doesn't belong. All right. By doing this, can we create some measurable benefits? To th- are there measurable benefits, Kelly, to thought reframing? Yeah, of course there are. Of course there are. You take this process and you and you institute this process into your life, you'll be able to see the following uh, measurably, measurably. Number one, can help to reduce your stress and anxiety. Okay, if you're not going to permit negative thoughts just to run willy nilly through your mental space, then of course there'll be less to to create havoc in terms of anxiety and stress uh, within your mental space. So thought reframing helps individuals to identify and challenge negative thought patterns that obviously contribute to stress and anxiety. So replacing negative thoughts with more positive and realistic ones, individuals experience reduced levels of stress, reduced levels of anxiety. This can be measured through self-reporting of stress levels and uh, changes in psychological markers like your heart rate or your cortisol levels. All this is measurable. And the reason I'm harping on measurable is because this is not my opinion. It's not subjective. This is objective. It needs to be something measurable. We're not talking about um, just theory. It's important that you know that there, this has been uh, proven to work. And the reason that's important to me, at least for this podcast, is because these practices, if uh, implemented, I'm suggesting to you as strongly as I can, they can work for you. And the only thing that you have to do is actually do it. All right. So the second thing is, in terms of measurability, you can improve your mood and emotional well-being. So the cognitive uh, reframing can lead to improved mood and emotional well-being. Studies have shown that individuals who engage in thought reframing, uh, the techniques that is, experience increased positive emotions and a decrease in negative ones as measured through a mood assessment and self-reporting. You can self-report to yourself, particularly if you journal. One of the first things you may want to ask yourself at the beginning of your day and at the end of your day is, how do I feel? How do I feel on a scale of one to five? Five being great, one being not great at all. How do I feel? So self-report and see if you see any difference in how you're feeling. Number three, enhance resilience. So reframing negative thoughts can improve an individual's ability to cope, uh, cope with challenges and setbacks. That's called increased resilience. This is measurable through assessments of coping mechanisms and how individuals respond to difficult situations. If you have the confidence that we talked about earlier, if you institute, you know, your CBTs, you have that type of confidence, you're not allowing negative negativity to hang out in your mental space. And even when it gets in, you know how to challenge it and to get it out. You're going to have a different level of confidence. So the increased confidence uh, will result in the resiliency and you'll be able to uh, measure it through, you know, the assessments of coping mechanism. Now, the next one is relatively similar. It's called increased self-confidence and self-efficiency. So as individuals replace negative thoughts with positive and empowering ones, their self-confidence and belief in their abilities, self-efficiency, they actually improve. This can be measured through self-assessments also of self-confidence and the willingness to take on new challenges. How often am I escalating? A lot of times folks are adverse to conflict because they don't want to, they don't think that they can successfully deal with it, quite honestly. Now, it's uncomfortable, yes, but they don't think that they can successfully deal with it, so they're adverse to it. But if you see someone that is continually going through conflict or continually going through, uh, going up a scale in terms of challenges, to me, that person is confident in their skill set that they can not only make it through this challenge, but they're looking forward to the next one because after you get through, it's just going to be another one. That's why. The um, uh, remembering of your past successes is so important because it's going to help you get to the next one. Always remember how successful you were prior because that's what's going to that's the fuel you're going to need to get through this challenge. All right. Improve self. uh, I'm sorry. Improve problem solving skills. Improve problem solving skills is number one, two, three, four, five. 
Thought reframing encourages individuals to approach problems from a more rational and a balanced perspective. As a result, they're very equipped to find creative solutions to challenges, which can be measured through improved problem-solving abilities and adaptive decision-making. Improved problem-solving. Number six, enhance interpersonal relationships. Enhance interpersonal relationships by thought reframing and you know reframing the negative thoughts individuals may have more positive and constructive interactions with others this can lead to improved communication empathy and understanding in relationships which can be measured through self assessments and feedback from others whoever the others that you're in a relationship with or dealing with uh, in general number uh, 7 is increased productivity and performance Thought reframing can boost motivation and focus, motivation and focus, leading to increased productivity and improved performance in various areas of your life, such as work or academics, relationship, otherwise. This can be measured through self-assessments of productivity levels and objective measures of performance, increased productivity and performance. And then lastly, better physical health. Positive mindset resulting from thought reframing can have a measurable impact on your physical health. Your physical health. I think when you're good mentally, then you've got such a great chance of letting that light shine and the body's going to be the first beneficiary of that. Studies have shown correlations between positive thinking and better immune system function. Better immune system uh, system function, reduce inflammation, and improve overall health outcomes and conditions. So your 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 mental being first is important uh, that we keep our mental well being as uh, overall you know uh, as as good as we can in terms of uh, being able to close out those negative thoughts and to promote as much positivity as possible. Sort of quick today, but I thought it was powerful. Personal alchemy, transforming and transmuting. I just wanted to dig a little deeper because I just think it's important that you know uh, practical steps on how to start this alchemical process. It, it's, it, it is esoteric in many ways, but it doesn't help you if you don't understand how to do it. So if you don't understand personal alchemy, then you're not going to be able to do it successfully. And if you don't believe that it can work for you, then understanding the steps is not going to help you. You got to get past the barrier of believing that it actually can work. So assuming we can get past both of those things, I've laid out to you today, uh, thought reframing in particular, how to implement it. And I gave you five actual practical methods uh, of alchemy, but we really dug deep into thought reframing. Let me go over real quickly to those practical methods again, those five. It was mindful awareness, thoughtful reframing, uh, thought reframing rather, and uh, gratitude practice, visualization, and positive self-talk. The thought reframing is where we went real deep. So take any of those five, implement them into your life. Let me know how it's working for you. Um, I have done everything except for the thought reframing to some degree. I think I've done it a little, but not as a practice. So I'm going to um, do that and I'll report back as well. You know, we've got 30 days. Let's talk about it in the next two, two to three weeks and we'll see where we are. And I hope this has been beneficial to you. If you do like the podcast, you did find this informative, give us a rating. Give us a five star. Let us know how awesome you think the podcast is doing and uh, helping you out. Don't forget to share it with a family member, friend, loved one, or associate. Guys, I hope you're having a great day. I hope this uh, added to your great day, your great week, your great month. And uh, we'll be back soon in another few days with another great podcast. Guys, thank you for supporting the podcast. We'll talk soon. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. 
Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.